In this video, we're going to look at how you can mask and unmask data that's coming into Microsoft Clarity from your website. So one of the things that I think is the coolest thing about Clarity is also one of the things I find the creepiest, and that's the ability to sit and watch the recordings of your website visitors and have a look and see how they're interacting with the pages. What's really um, interesting is that the, the data that's being sent back, we can view it all and that's great, are you seeing everything that's coming from your website? The answer is no, not necessarily. So one of the things that happens is that by default, sensitive data or sensitive content is already masked before it gets sent to Clarity. So Clarity is defining and determining what it thinks is sensitive data. So for example, if you have a website where somebody is logging in and there's a username or a password, those are likely or should be masked and you shouldn't actually see that data in Clarity. Now, what I noticed when I first set this up is we can see here, this is looking at a heat map and up here we've got dots. So that's not really very helpful. And when I look at my website, if I go to um, one of the blog pages, um, so let's just have a look here. So the dots that we're seeing in Clarity it's just the date of the post. So it's not sensitive, but Clarity or Microsoft had defined and said, okay, by default, we're just not gonna pass that through. Now I actually might find that useful when I'm having a look at the data in Clarity, just to kind of see, okay, how old is the post that somebody's viewing without having to jump back to the website to check. So what we can do is we can add in a little bit of code um, We can, and it's not, yeah, it's code, it's not really code, it's low code. So what we can do is we can add something that's basically an attribute that we can add into um, what we call a div. Now, talked about divs a little bit in some of the other videos. A div is basically just a way to kind of um, lay out a website and put things into blocks or sections. So for example, the title up here this um, uses a div, the date uses a div. Now, if I right click and you can do this on any website, if I right click on this and click on inspect, what I can see is that it opens up and it shows me the different, again, elements or divs that I've got on this. So I have a div called entry hero wrapper. I have one called entry meta. I have this H1 class that uses entry title. So I have all of these different things. Now, if I right click on the date, we can see that I've got something that's called div class entry date. Now, what I can do is if now I'm actually in the code for my website, so this might be a bit daunting. So definitely if you have somebody that helps you out with your website, have them, them do this and check with them. But all we need to do is when we want to unmask the data, when we actually want to send back the real information rather than all of the dots, is I just need to add this attribute into the div class. So by default, if I just get rid of this, by default, that is what it looks like where it actually pulls in the date on my blog post. So that div class of entry date, after that, all I need to do is put data hyphen clarity hyphen unmask equals true. What that then does is moving forward, it will not retroactively go back and make changes to the data and clarity for previous visits. But if I go ahead and I change these, um, uh, filters and let's go ahead and just see what we've got for today. Uh, actually, let's go to the recordings instead and put the filter on and we'll do today and apply that. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so now what we can see is I'm looking at the recording and instead of seeing the dots, we're actually seeing the date. So that is a way to unmask something that is not currently being sent through that you want to be able to see. Now, what about if you have something on your website where you've got um, comments? So for example, if I go to one of my uh, posts that has the most comments on it, um, or one of, the, one of the most, and I scroll down, here we can see that we've got comments. These are public, so everyone can see them. But in an example, let's say that I've got um, photos and, and names of people 
that I don't necessarily um, have exposed so not everyone can see it. And maybe I'm sharing the project in Microsoft Clarity with a marketing team. Maybe I outsource and I'm using another company and I don't necessarily want them to see that. But by default, that's being sent back through. So what we can do is we can kind of um, flip it and do the opposite. And instead of using the unmask true, we can change that and we can do mask true. So those are the two attributes that we can use. So once I've added the mask equals true attribute to a specific div where I'm actually able to see those um, comment post and the picture and the, the name of the person, then let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So I'm just going to put in a filter and I know that I've got uh, somebody that viewed a comment on a page that was about net promoter scores. So let's go ahead and see if we can get to that. And yep. So if I now then watch this recording and I see where they scroll down towards the bottom of the page, let's go ahead and we'll pause it. There we go. So now what has happened is it's hidden the photograph and it's hidden the name of the person so that even though I can see the information, I can't actually see their photo or the, the um, name that they've posted. So those are two ways in which to mask and then also unmask the data or unmask and mask, whichever way around you want to do it. And just remember when you see these dots, that's what that's telling you. It's basically showing that the data that's being pushed back um, into Clarity from your website has been masked. You can unmask it or you can take data that is currently coming through and being displayed and you can mask that. So two ways in which you can do that to, again, control the data that's being passed back to Clarity. If it's just you that's, view, uh, that's viewing it and you have access to that data anyway, you might not care about masking it. Um, that, I would say, is if you're sharing and there's a project that other people that are maybe outside of your organization I don't wouldn't have access to that level of content, that's where you might want to choose to mask it. The unmasking, like I said, is helpful if there's something that's coming back and you're not able to see it in clarity and you'd have to go back to your website to check it, then I would say go ahead and use the unmask. So let me know what you think in the comments below if you think this is something that you're going to use. Again, you really just need two bits of um, uh, cont um, uh, content snippets to either mask or unmask. I've got a link to the blog in the top of this description for this video uh, that you can go ahead and click on and get access to the blog so it's got everything in there in terms of the code. But it's really, really simple. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks, guys. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.